Ugh. You see this crap? First day of March, and it's snowing. It was raining like all night. Good like 60 degrees yesterday. Today it's like 30. Ugh. That's Ohio for you. So I had this whole thing that I was going to do today, it was this whole talking head video, and I'm deciding not to. We're going to do something else instead, and it's going to be a lot more fun. So, here we go. So when I was in grad school, they gave us a studio, and they were just old and dirty and pretty all-around gnarly. So. I was having a lot of troubles with uh, dust in my paintings. Um, if you use canvas, you've probably never experienced that before um, because all the dust just kind of goes and sits inside all of those little pockets. And if you're using panel, then it's just all out there. There's, there's no hiding that stuff. And so you get every little hair, every little piece of dust showing up in your paint, especially if you're doing glazing and stuff where there's a lot of high oil content for things to stick to. So I was having all sorts of problems with, uh, with, with just decades of dust getting stuck in this thing. And I was at, at the point where I was like scraping stuff off with like an actual razor blade going in with like heavy grit sandpaper trying to take it down to a point where I could like try to repaint and fix things. It was bad. Um, so today though, I'm going to show you some of the methods that I started using to basically have no dust or hair or anything in my paintings. It's made life a whole lot easier. It makes my paintings look a whole lot better. And all around, life is just a lot happier. So the first thing that I did was basically try to eliminate all of the dust that I could. I did a mass studio cleaning which helped um, because I don't think that place had ever been cleaned. A good mopping of your floor is definitely going to save you a lot of trouble in the end. Uh, so that's basically tip number one. Have a clean studio. Don't be one of those messy artists that has stuff everywhere. Um, my studio mate was kind of a hoarder in some senses. He used a lot of found materials and everything. And all that stuff came over into my painting studio. So what I had to do was I actually had to go and buy a bunch of heavy visqueen. And I stapled that stuff all around the studio. And basically made it look like a scene from like Dexter or um, CSI or some something something creepy. Be like that there it looked like there was some stuff going on in there because like I did the doorway which I'm sure probably wasn't up to fire code and made like little slits to walk through I did all around the windows and everything which I'm sure probably wasn't a fire code and uh, just basically blocked off anywhere where I thought that outside dust was going to be coming into the studio uh, so obviously make smart decisions. Don't do things that you're not supposed to do. If it's blocking like fire stuff, don't do it. If it's like in your house and you you're like in a basement, then whatever. Like do you know do what's gonna do what's gonna work. But it's not my fault if something bad happens. Just saying. Other thing is to make sure that you're actually like cleaning the studio. Make sure that you actually mop the floors, make sure that you're vacuuming, all of that stuff. And make sure that you're using like HEPA filtered vacuum cleaners and all that stuff that's designed to get rid of dust. Otherwise, when you walk in, you're instantly kicking that stuff up. 
that's not cool. Now it's in the air. It's going to settle somewhere. So the next step, uh, tip number two, get an air purifier. Get an air purifier that's designed to deal with dust. Uh, so I went and got this guy. I really like this one. It's pretty good. I found it on uh, Amazon. Uh, I don't remember how much it was, probably too much, but it does a really good job. Um, it has a bunch of different speeds. If you're just kind of running it all the time, you could just set it to auto and it'll do its thing. Um, otherwise, it's it can get pretty loud, so we'll, uh, we'll set it to turbo. I don't know about you, but for me, that would kind of get annoying after a while. I kind of just like to set it so that it's a decent volume. It's a small room. It's going to do way more than I need it to for here. Uh, tip number three, clean your brushes. People leave brushes out all the time and then they're surprised when there's dust and stuff in their paintings. I was totally guilty of this and I learned my lesson. I now paint, I clean my brushes after every single usage. Um, a lot of people do just do the whole like, well, I'm just gonna dip it in oil or whatever and leave it and it'll be fine for the next time. You're also picking up anything that was in the air that is now settling on those brushes. Uh, number four, get a drying box. I built this thing I built this thing uh, out of plywood, and <clears throat> and it's pretty awesome. It was a great like couple day uh, project for me and my dad. We just went into his garage and built this thing out of some plywood and a fan. And basically, all it is is this big box. Uh, you can't really see it because I've got tons of stuff on it, but it basically goes all the way back here there's a fan down there that is blowing air into it if I move this you can see that there's a slot in there to fit a filter that's an important step that's an important thing if you're gonna be blowing air into a box that you're sticking your paintings in you want it filtered because otherwise it's just going to pick up any dust that's in the air, any dust that's get kicked up from the ground, and it's going to shoot it across your paintings. So you want to make sure that you get a filter that's actually designed for dust. And basically you just kind of stick your paintings in here. I made it so that I can fit anything from like really small paintings, to, uh, to larger paintings. And basically I can put anything in there as long as it's about 24 inches wide and as deep as where the filter is. Oops, let's turn the air filter off. That was loud. All right, so I put this fan down here. I put this fan down here, here to blow into the box. Uh, I tried a couple different things. Uh, I originally just had like a duct fan that I was gonna try and that did like nothing. So I ended up finding this big Lasco fan at Home Depot. It was way more expensive than I wanted, but it was one of those kind of situations where I wanted overkill. I wanted to be able to open that box and feel like my hair getting pushed back. I wanted that much air moving over the piece so that it's actually drying. Um, cool thing is, is that it actually has like a couple different settings. Uh, so depending on like how heavy I want this thing going, it also has a couple extra little plugs there so that I can uh, plug in my computer or something into there so I don't need like an extra like little surge protector thing. But this guy, <clears throat> this guy pumps too. Pretty loud. 
uh, especially if you have the air filter going. Uh, so it's definitely one of those kind of things that I just leave this thing off unless there's work in there that I actually want, uh, <clears throat> unless there's work in there that I want to dry. So basically when I'm done for the day and I'm leaving the studio, going to like go make dinner or something, I'm turning that thing on when I leave so that I'm not having to like yell if the phone rings or so I don't have to have music blasting or anything like that. So really, really cool. Uh, I made space underneath for uh, flat storage that I can just slide things under there. Obviously, it's also really great uh, shelf for guitar cases and all that stuff. Uh, so I have I have a lunch I have to get to, and I'm running out of time here, but we'll fit in uh, two more things. This is sandpaper. Wet sand your paintings. This is gonna make things so much cleaner and so much better. Uh, I have anywhere from 600 grit to 1200 grit. Personally, I like the 1200 grit better. Um, you don't have to worry about it taking any paint off, even if you're just doing glazes and stuff. It doesn't actually take paint off. Uh, if it does, you're doing it wrong. Half the time I'm not actually wet sanding, half the time I'm just kind of taking it on there dry and kind of just spotting where things are most dirty, where the things are most dusty, and I'm just taking that little bit off. It'll make things look kind of dull, but all you have to do is just oil out and everything's back to looking great. Uh, what I will do though is that after I'm done sanding, what I'll do is I'll take a paper towel and I'll wet it down a little bit and take any of that dust off too because i mean you're making dust so you're making dust to take dust off so you should probably clean up that dust too uh the other thing is to use good towels use good paper towels um i like these blue ones these are made by scott it's a, just a shop cloth these are great they're really tough you can you know you can actually like really get a lot of life out of these so I, I i don't go through them that fast i buy them in kind of like a bulk and then that takes the cost right down but honestly for as little as i actually go through these uh the cost is okay by me that's basically the ways that i get rid of dust uh like i said keep your keep your space clean keep your air clean keep your brushes clean Keep the air that you're blowing over your pieces clean. It's all about cleanliness. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully you can uh, you can try some of that stuff out. Uh, if this helps you, let me know in the comment section below. Please like and subscribe to the channel. And please check me out on Instagram at Matthew Cook Art. So until next time, I'm Matt. See ya. Fun things came in the mail today. Let's get it. New camera battery. All right, so these are cool. These are gonna have to be a video for another day. 
Uh, but these are, can you read that? No, all right, right there. Pinhole Pro. These are mass produced pinhole lenses. Not a lens because there's no glass. These are a Kickstarter that these guys made that is gonna be awesome. I'm gonna do a little more research so that I can speak a little more eloquently about them. And I'm gonna do a video on these uh, soon because these are awesome and I'm super excited to try these out. I've always wanted to try uh, pinhole shooting, um, but there's never really been a good way of doing it with like a DSLR. Um, but these are great because you can actually put like an ND filter or something on these and then that covers up the hole so you don't have just like this opening into your mirror and sensor. So I'm gonna try some video with these. I'm gonna try some portrait work with these and uh, I'll get back to you. But I'm super excited about these. This is gonna be awesome.